some really awesome portfolios to showcase as well. And, um, and uh, I just want to say that uh, there are things to maybe aspire to, um, but more than anything, it's going to be the relationships that you create in your life that get you that in, that get you farther in the interview process. So in the sake, or for the sake, or in the spirit of community, we're going to do a little icebreaker real quick. So I want you to introduce yourself to a couple people you don't know and tell them what you wanted to be when you grew up or grow up. 30 seconds. Let's do it. Somebody you don't know. What did you want to be when you grow up? How'd that go? I'm sure there's a lot of awesome stories. <laughs> when I started thinking about what I was doing, it was like, I mean, you can literally talk about it for hours. Um, who here wanted to be a designer when they were actually growing up? That's awesome. A creative of some sort. Yeah, absolutely. Who here wanted to be a recruiter? <laughs> Always accidental. <laughs> um, I mean, this stat is one that I passed around to fellow creative directors and senior art directors. At least 51% of the reason why you receive an offer is because of your portfolio. And I, and, and I challenged them. I was like, is this true? Could this be a really true statement? And it ranged from like 51% to about 75%, uh, depending on who I asked. And I think... Your portfolio is, if you don't know somebody, if you don't have an in, um, probably 100% of the reason why you're going to get a call to even start the conversation. So uh, tonight we're going to explore some truths around this. Uh, we're going to examine the importance and the impact and the influence that your portfolio has on your career. We're going to see real feedback from design directors here in the city of Seattle. Uh, we're going to talk about elements that go into a good case study. Uh, we're going to talk about where you can find some inspiration and where you can find the latest portfolio design tools to help create and best talk about your narrative and the work you do. And then lastly, we're going to peruse three or four or five um, portfolios of people that I think are doing it well, a couple of which I've hired, a couple of which I'd be interested in hiring. Um, and uh, the whole thing will be about a half an hour. And then uh, we'll open it up to, I know that's a ton, right? Um, I've been talking about this, by the way, for like 15, well, not 15, like 13 years. Um, and so I want to thank Larry and SVC. I've never had to take it out of here and put it into a PowerPoint before. Um, and so um, it's nice to have. But before we go on, I am going to talk a little bit, give some context to my background, uh, what I do, and what might qualify me to do a talk like this. Um, I am the principal recruiter at Artifact. Uh, we are a product design and innovation firm that specializes in design for technology. We have an emphasis on the emerging tech space and the social impact space. So in one area, we're working in uh, virtual and augmented reality, uh, smart cities, digital democracy, car UI, connected home, internet of things, future of this, future of that. Um, it's a lot of exciting work. And we take that knowledge, and we do a lot in the social impact space. So we have deep expertise in health, education, and humanity-based product design and development. Um, not everything we do is going to save or change the world. Um, and a lot of the times, not even close. But we look to work with people who, given the opportunity, would rise to that occasion or, or give it their best shot. Um, I'm lucky. Artifact sends me all over the country and actually the world, uh, representing their brand um, at career conferences and conferences um, uh, throughout the US. Um, from Art Center in Pasadena to Parsons in New York City, RISD in Rhode Island, um, Savannah College of Art Design in, in Georgia, uh, to SVC here in Seattle, and a lot of places in between. Um, and then worldwide, the brand of Artifact attracts a lot of people. We had over 4,000 applicants last year. And by principal recruiter, it's a fancy way of saying the only recruiter. Um, <laughs> 
<laughs> probably half of what comes in, half of those numbers have a, a portfolio relation to it. Um, and it's all to find people like this. Um, you know, right now I'm looking at uh, interaction in UX designers, UI designers, visual designers, graphic designers, web production artists, software engineers, design researchers, design strategists, uh, marketing and PR uh, folks, and then uh, account and project management folks. Um, and my opinion is, for those of you that aren't a designer or getting into design, your portfolio or having a web presence, even if you don't have work to show, is still an exercise in creating narrative and in having a digital footprint or fingerprint here in the city of Seattle. And it's extremely important. Um, I think portfolios, as the dig digital age continues uh, upon us, will be a, a better way for people outside of design and tech to introduce themselves into it um, and to rally support and interest in their background and get further in the process and beat out your competition. Because even though we're the third largest market in the United States, um, it's still highly competitive. Prior to Artifact, as Larry mentioned, I worked in staffing consultancies for almost 10 years, um, working with the brands that you see here on the screen and many more. I uh, helped book over 1,000 projects for people and uh, clients in our community. I have a BA in advertising, and I specialized in copywriting and graphic design. And one of the things that I preach when it comes to portfolio is, is creating a brand experience. Um, having people become immersed in your work. And we're going to talk more about that and see a lot more. But don't take my word for it. Um, I went and I asked people in my community, like I said, creative directors, and told them what I was going to be doing. And uh, I specifically asked them, what do you look for in a portfolio that makes you want to talk to an applicant? So let's review some of the things that people said. Every day projects should solve, or every design project should solve a previous issue or a problem the client or user might have. So it's nice to be able to clearly explain it in your portfolio. This shows that you are thinking about the project the right way. Process um, is what they're talking about, not just a in conclusion. Did you follow some sort of um, uh, map of, of collecting the information you needed to design? One thing, the one portfolios that will get, get past the process is if you just have hot, beautiful, sexy design work. Um, like, we'll forgive your lack of narrative, maybe. <laughs> it's often a balance between pure execution of visuals. Does the quality capture my attention? And actually showing a rationale and process behind it. Pure execution of visuals, so even I'm imagining there's a lot of people in this room that aren't necessarily graphic designers or visual designers. Um, and so we'll be talking about some of the tools and some of the tricks and some of the um, less is more and simplicity matters uh, techniques that you can um, use to approach and approach design. But again, they're also talking process. What was the rationale? Why did you do what you did? I'll admit that this entire presentation is going to lean a little bit more UX focused. Um, but I can answer questions about them all. If your current or past work doesn't represent what you want to be doing, print design switching to UX, then do personal projects. Here's a website I built. Um, here's a prototype I did. This feedback was, was longer, but what they were saying is, you know, if I, I'm looking for shared values, I'm looking for shared interest. If, if I'm designing digital products, um, I, I want to see digital products in the portfolio. The good news is that your portfolio is a digital product. And, and if you approach it like that and you think about it like that, it becomes the most important portfolio piece in your portfolio, the portfolio itself. Acknowledgement of the problem you are trying to solve and hot looking shh. <laughs> um, so again, um, a focus on visual presentation, visual communication, and the process. And lastly, I'm going to, this is a senior creative director, he's an executive creative director, and he had a stream of consciousness on Slack that he sent me, and I'm just going to like stream of consciousness him real quick. Um, 
he's a bit maniacal and, and awesome and hard to understand and, and a, a total craftsman at the work he does. But all about presentation, does it grab you? First instinct is to stop in your tracks and look deeper. Does the work challenge me? Is there a clever point of view? Wonderful thought around what they did. Unique, fresh, solved from own perspective. Can't be copied. Attention to detail, soul. Mechanical talent. <laughs> Stylistic variation, switch it up, take a brand, own it, event it. Does it solve the problem? Does it inspire me? Show confidence, communication, and entrepreneurial design. Understand modern and emerging trends, creating variations using form, composition, language, imagery, color, etc. We've been playing with these things for 100 years. How did you do it differently? That can be like a super intimidating yeah. kind of quote. Like I'm writing this down, and I'm like, man. Um, but there's some things that he's capturing in there. Is my first instinct to stop in my tracks and look deeper. In some ways, this is your campaign. Um, this is your chance to say, it's the same way when you're looking at an advertisement or where you're looking at something you're going to buy, um, something stopped you in your tracks and said like, and, and you felt quality from it and you were intrigued and you wanted to go d deeper. This is the same mechanisms that you're trying to employ in your portfolio. It's a product, it's a brand, and then it's ex an experience. And for those of you that don't have a lot of digital product work or brand experience work, um, your portfolio is the perfect opportunity to start that. So. I want you to also consider it as a learning lesson and an opportunity to show your level of craft. Craft is one of the main things that's going to stop somebody in their tracks. I would almost say that the idea, the presentation of the idea is, is more important than the idea itself, at least initially as far as getting the job. Narrative personas, ideation and sketching and capturing that ideation process through photography, wireframes, working prototypes, high fidelity mockups. These are all individual design challenges and assets that you can use to raise your own bar and to show what your true dedication to craft is. Dedication to craft earns you confidence and respect. And again, if we're just looking at your portfolio and you're a name out of 200 other names that have applied in the last three days, um, it's gonna be the first 10 second test that we're doing. And having someone's confidence and respect are two of the best ways to get you hired. So where do you start? Well, is anyone working in user experience right now, working in digital product design. Imagine a lot of you are using design thinking methodology around approaching um, your work. Um, again, this goes back to shared values, shared experiences. We're looking for an understanding that you maybe, I don't want to say think like we think or, or, or reading what we're reading, um, as much as it's um, you understand the process that, that, that we're going through as well. And so I think you can actually take the design thinking model and you can apply that directly to your case studies in your portfolios. And so we'll talk about these design thinking steps and how they translate real quickly into design assets that you can use in your portfolio. Um, the first one here, define and observe. If we were designing a product right now, we'd be asking ourselves, what's, what's the problem? Um, what information do I need to clearly define the problem? Now, how does this translate to your portfolio? I think this is, this is your narrative. This is you reflecting before you design of, of um, okay, I've got a finished finish piece here. What are the solutions in this finished piece? What are some of the features in this, I don't need to see all 100 screens that you did, and let's face it, you probably didn't do 100 screens, especially if you're kind of mocking up some quick work to show your skills. But I wanna see screens that have 
a key feature or are solving a key problem. And in that narrative where it's not a block of text, you know, I don't want to open up an Excel doc as your portfolio, and I don't want to see a Word doc of just a novel in front of me. Nobody's going to read it. Um, the second one, empathy. How might or uh, what can I learn from the user? What can I learn about the need? The design assets that this translates to are these are your personas. Um, these are your experience maps that you're creating. Ideation. If we were building the product, we might say, how might I generate some ideas? Um, what are potential solutions? Um, ideation for your portfolio is documenting your creative process. If you're working in, in a creative collaborative group setting, at one point just remember to stand up and take a picture of it. Um, take a picture of the whiteboards. Um, when you're sketching, even if you're not proud of your sketching, um, uh, if you have an organization around it, um, take a picture of that. The more you get into the habit of doing this in real time, the less work you're going to have to do when you're actually building your portfolio. Uh, prototyping. Uh, how might I show the idea? Um, what can I create or build as an example? This is the true guts of your case study. Um, the way this is going to translate for you is um, this is the, uh, the wireframes. These are the working prototypes. This is the, the high fidelity or as high fidelity as you can get the final design. And number five is a little bit harder. This will be a stretch. You're not going to test. I mean, you'll test and refine. Hopefully, you're going to send out. I mean, you know what? If nobody's calling you back, uh, that's the test. Um, and so now it's time to refine. Um, but I, I think where this translates into your portfolio is, is putting an exclamation mark on it at the end. Um, I think sometimes you can show the work, and it starts strong with a hero image. Maybe you got the idea where it's, you know, a nice simple statement of, of what you're about to solve, what we're about to see, nice and readable, easy, clean. Uh, we can go through the process, and then it just kind of ends. It quietly ends, you know? And I think test and refine here is more like, what was the outcome? What did I solve? Um, it, it's putting the punctuation mark at the end of it. Think of it, if you thought of it more as this particular case study was a new business pitch and you were going for $10 million at the end of it, like what would that presentation look like? And what, was, what would be that call to action or that thing, that last move that you're gonna use um, to try to seal the deal and have people say, yes, here's 10 mil. Be a little bit hard. Um, it's, that's a little intimidating too. So we're gonna go through um, um, a couple of the examples of what we talked about in one, two, three, and four. Um, by the way, I'm one person. You ask 100 people and you'll get 100 different answers. Um, so no matter what, you know, take what feels right with you. But I didn't write the book on it. I just designed a PowerPoint um, over the last couple of weeks on it. And so um, you know, what sticks with you, great. And, and what doesn't resonate, toss it out. Um, you're the designer, after all. So personas. Um, you know, this is in that research phase of you gathering, who am I designing this for? Who is my end user? I'm sorry that it's blurry. It's not so much meant to, um, you know, read as much as to articulate this right here in some ways is, is a wireframe in itself. Um, we're using color, typography, space, um, imagery, form, composition to take a lot of information and, um, and make it presentable. Um, that right there, when I'm going through your case studies, if I've seen that you've, if, if you have the opportunity to do a persona of who this might be, which by the way, is, is something you should be thinking about while you're creating your design, no matter what the medium is. It's like, who am I creating this for? Um, what actually goes into a persona? This is an easy design solution, especially for those of you that don't have wireframes right now. It's a chance to um, do an experience in this and build something out. Documenting the process. Um, you know, like I said, sketching, it doesn't get much more clear than that. And there's actually a great tool out there by a local design agency. Does anybody use UI stencils? Have you heard of that? Great. It's uh, uh, David Conrad, who is uh, d uh, owner and founder at um, 
design commission um, and uh, who's actually going over to Microsoft as a design director over there after, after 10 years of running his own firm. And I'll show you that site and everything. Um, but you don't have to be a great sketcher. Um, the point is, is that we're seeing that you had a process, that you were thinking through it. In a lot of product design spaces in the UX community, you're, going to be, you're not going to be an individual soldier. You're going to be part of a, a bigger process. For those of you that aren't um, super strong in kind of a high fidelity visual design standpoint, and honestly, this oversimplifies wireframes, um, but I think it's important that you, you hone in on your skills when it comes to um, you know, programs like Illustrator or, or Sketch um, that are out there. If, if you can create a clean, simple, minimalistic representation of what your design looks like, it's all right that it's not sexy. It's so clean and minimalistic and the thought is so clear um, that that's another level of craft. You could stop right there in your, in your sketches, and a lot of people do. But if you're finished, if you're lacking in what you can do in, in high fidelity visual UI, then I would say your next step would be to create as high fidelity or as as clean and simple and minimalistic wireframes as you can, as you can possibly create. And if you wanted to go way above and beyond, um, prototype your your design work. Even if it's the wireframe, even if it's the, the simple minimalistic wireframe, picking up skills in Framer or in After Effects will exponentially um, increase your, I mean, it, it's literally, it's actually, it's, it, it's a mighty jump. Like if you're already, you're in a class of your own, if you do all this well and you have UI animation, um, you're just a whole different conversation. Um, it's also, again, these are little opportunities you have to learn. Um, SVC teaches a lot of these classes. Um, and uh, and it, it all applies to the job that you're trying to apply for. So it's only going to help make whatever you get into even easier um, and more developed. And you'll walk in the door even having more confidence and more respect and more trust from your future employers. So let's ditch the PowerPoint. Let's look at some stuff. Where am I? We're going to approve some portfolios. Is Haran Shavir here tonight? All right. I didn't know if he was going to be. Um, I'm going to go through the portfolios like a recruiter goes through a portfolio. <laughs> And, you'll, and, and I'm just going to think out loud, and I'll show you what, what I see. I come to Haran Shavir's portfolio. He's a master's student at University of Washington right now, and I believe from Mumbai um, before that. Um, I come to the page. He looks like a fun guy. Um, he looks like, yeah, positive. You know, I have positive vibes right now. This, this is just what I'm thinking. Go into his work. He's got a nice, you know. I mean, I, I, I'm a fan right now of. Uh, this is what I'm doing actually. I go, I go right down your page, and I just see like, is there some craft going on? Is there some color? Is there um, something that's intriguing me here? Um, I'll usually go to the first first portfolio piece you put on there. I'm thinking that you led with your best. Um, but I sit next to creative directors all the time and they'll go to your last piece, which is food for thought. If, if, if you can't, when in doubt, toss it out, basically. Like, if you need to be in person to explain yourself, even if it's that project that you like, put a year into and you love it so much, but it's just not holding up, like, get rid of it. I'd rather see three projects. I'd rather see one really awesome project that's just totally put together. You'll still get a call back from that. I don't even need to see the second one. Three is great. Twelve's fine too. You know, as long as I'm going through it. If I'm winding up at the end and I'm like, oh, like this this piece seems out of place or out of date, or then I start wondering, like, well, what was your role really on that piece that I loved, where I was really going to call you, but then I kept going and now I've talked myself out of it. 
Um, again, I'll go like this real quick when I get to your case study. I just want to see how thorough you're going. I'll scroll down. Um, you know, he's got some design and illustrator skills and things like that. You know, he's using some um, information graphics and iconography to um, explain his idea and, and set it up. Um, you know, there is a lot of text on here, um, but it's, it's still laid out in a way where it's digestible. Again, just not rocket science, probably did not solve the world, world's problems with these two whiteboard images, but he's, ex he's shown that there's some process involved there. I can jump into additional information if I want to. Ugh. Ah, oh, God, no. <laughs> but for a, a, a UX director, um, especially research directors of ours and project leads that are setting it up, they might be interested in that documentation. Um, I can easily go to his next projects here. I can easily contact him. I'll probably go like three deep, you know. Um, this one, you know, he's put together a branded experience. Um, you know, he's using color, he's using iconography, and he's pulling it together. So I feel like I'm looking at something that's real, even though I don't think Bill Hap is real. He's organized the data again where it's digestible. He's kept the same design theme through here, these two regular colors. Again, I'm going through a branded experience. I see that he's pulling it all together. His user flows. His process. And now he's kind of got me. He's got me intrigued. Um, because And I can do his prototype that he's done in, in Framer or whatnot. Nope, in Vision, sorry. Um, so he's kind of hit on all the categories for me there. Um, is he a high fidelity visual UI designer? Probably not. Um, is he capable of doing it? Yep, that's a plus. Does he have a lot of process to his background? Absolutely. Is he a UX designer? Is he thinking, thinking about systems and the architecture of things? Absolutely. Um, he also happens to be getting a master's degree, so continued learner. And that's when I'll go and figure out who you are. I've never looked at a resume first. Um, I don't care if you went to school or where you went to school. Um, I, I care about your craft. Um, and I'll jump in. He's keeping it nice and simple again. So. Oh, let's see. This is Amelia Barlow, and I work with her. She's fantastic. I love her. Um, and she's from Western um, Washington. She graduated last year, and she did their BFA program in product design. And of all the... Um, starting your career out portfolios that came in to Artifact, this one captured everybody's attention um, the best. First off, personality. You know, not everybody's going to put an image of themselves. I don't like to put images of myself, um, and typically I shy away from it altogether. Um, Haran has, like I said, there was personality in that image, so go for it, Haran. Um, Amelia is starting it off with. Um, just a nice, simple sentence. And it has so much personality, I was immediately intrigued. And so was everybody else that got it. I go through here real quick, and just the color and, and the simplicity of it, I'm like, okay, this will be fun. Jump into it. Let's do it. She's and created an entire branded experience for us um, using, um, you know, her copy is, is simple and direct. Um, it won a little something here, or semi-finalist. She takes the time to even put a brand slide. Let's, let's even deepen it further. You know, we don't, we're in a digital scrolling age. You can literally 
scroll forever. So why are you trying to fit it all in into one little text block? Like give it air to breathe. Um, take us through the brand experience. Just keeping it simple, giving us the background here. Even the way, you know, she's, she's laying out this and having it come into focus. Um, th these are cues from classic marketing communication design, which Pinterest is a great source to just start at because you'll find a billion blogs, as I'm sure a lot of you all know. Um, and it's creating boards. I, we actually hired somebody off their Pinterest page before. Um, yeah, they were junior, so junior, and we couldn't really tell what their level of craft was in their portfolio. But what they were pinning and the way they organized it in their portfolio was at such a beautiful quality level, we were like, let's give it a go. Let's just go for it. So she's calling it out, you know, user research, conceptual development, user flows, usability testing, identity design. Hey, we do that. In fact, we do all of that in our creative process. That sounds like somebody who understands what we're doing. Um, her process. It's not even that I can understand anything that she's learning or solving here, but she's showing that she's doing it. She's got a quick video that talks about it, that's prototyping it. We don't need to play it right now. I'm hit or miss on videos, and I'm going to show you another portfolio that I think does it better. Um, and it does come down to prototyping it and UI. Um, but again, nice branded experience. It all feels like it goes together. Amelia does fall more in the visual design and, and UI category and visual communication, but she has very strong UX skills. Um, but I know it when I'm looking at it, just the high fidelity that um, initially she's going to have strength and power in her, in her visual capabilities. I can simply go to her next project. Right now, I already know I'm calling Amelia. Like, it's, it's already settled. I've got my cell phone out. Actually, I never call anybody anymore. I email them all. Um, but, um, but I'm just going to her second piece just to see real quick. And I'm like, and I'm going through. It's showing the ideation. Again, I'm, I have a branded experience that's happening here. Now, at this point, I'm just going for, all right, what's, what's her capabilities real quick? Um, now I'm kind of excited, and I'm just looking through it. Now she's carried the theme throughout all of her case studies. So she's not reinventing the wheel with every case study. She's doing the same blocks up here. Um, you know, she's doing the, the same way of storytelling. She's nailed that down. She's designed this process. She sat, and I talked to her earlier today, and, uh, and she has a whole other notebook where she's wireframing what her portfolio pages were going to look like. And when she decided what it was, then she implements it and repeats. And it, it would be good for me to say as well, there was one super interesting piece in here that she did. Um, they're all interesting to me. But here, she worked with a designer in Cinema 4D. <coughs> And this is kind of luck of the draw here. You know, she had a highly technical um, partner, and she's working on a bicycling app for Portland that helps you learn safety features um, in virtual reality. It'll never happen, or at least you know the concept had so many holes in it. Um, but we were like, ah, oh, like biking. Uh, we we're interested in biking. We developed a brake pack product that you can see on our site. Virtual reality, oh, we're working in VR and AR right now. Um, and then the way she's showing it, like, it was like, oh yeah, like, we're deaf. And then, and then she even made some assets. She wasn't scared to experiment with the new technology and learn something. So I can't tell you what to design or what problems in the world to solve. But I do encourage you to start to identify the companies that you want to be a part of and that you want to work for and start to get an understanding of what industries are they helping out. Um, especially if you're, you have the opportunity through coursework at SVC or uh, if you're in classes right now 
and you get kind of a wide open opportunity to design whatever you want, um, then maybe if you were like, hey, I'm interested in company X, company X does this, I'm going to do an experiment in this. So she had just multiple edges to her sword. Armina is graduating from Simon Fraser University, which is a school in uh, Vancouver, BC. And I had the chance to go up there a month ago or something like that, and we did a conference. And I was actually completely blown away by their entire curriculum. Um, they have, they don't care when you graduate. So they don't actually do a four year program. There's people there that are like six or seven years into a program, and you kind of, Whenever you want, you can just take an internship for however long you want. It was mind-blowing. So I'm seeing work, and I'm like, you're a junior? Um, I'm like, how is this possible? Um, so don't be threatened, even though she is a junior, actually. She's been in the program for six years. <laughs> um, and she just travels the world and takes internships. Um, so I go through it real quickly. I haven't seen this layout before. Um, I'm intrigued because... I haven't seen the layout before. And that's another thing. Even though these Haran and Amelia uh, kind of have a familiar space, this was a kicker on Amelia. Um, you don't have to do this, but what did I do? Oh, there's two things. I go to a resources page. And she just talks about design, non-design programs and studios and web projects that she's in love with. So there I'm like, oh, like this is somebody who's actually, she's passionate about what she does. She's sharing her, her, her field and her open view on it. Um, in fact, one of the ways that you can fake it till you make it is creating a blog um, and, and post something about design and technology in yourself. Um, pick three categories. I'm saying design and technology if you want to be in UX and then something about yourself. And once a week, post whatever article you found that was interesting about something current. And just write a headline to it. Um, a year from now, you're going to wake up, and you're going to have a Tumblr blog with 52 posts around the most current design trends out there. At the very least, you're going to learn something. You're going to be better read, more able to hang in a conversation, in, in an interview, have a point of view, not be taken off guard by some new technology. And um, even if you don't have a lot of work to back it up, your passion and enthusiasm and knowledge about the space is enough to advance you forward into a process. One other thing that she did, where is it at? About, um, uh, I don't think it's there either. Now, you know what? I forgot where to look for it, so never mind. She built the site herself. And don't let that intimidate you. And we're going to show you some tools that, that can help with that. But when I realized that she also kind of did her own web production and development, then it was just like case closed. Um, we have a lengthy interview process, and she just skipped right through it. Um, so back to Armina. So I'm intrigued. It's a different place. I'll jump right into the first case study. Zillow's in her backyard. I've placed people at Zillow. I'm in interested in what they have to say. She's starting with a, head, a header image. She's doing web production, inserting um, her screen into a real scenario. She leads with a video. I'm hit or miss on that, because I'm not going to watch it, to be honest. Um, but I'm going down quickly. I'm, I'm thinking at first, like, oh, OK, she's definitely UX. She's got it broken up into little sound bites, you know, the approach. Lesson she's learning. This is all pretty good right now. Now she starts prototyping it. I'm like, OK. This is still lo-fi, super lo-fi wireframing here. Um, so this is something that a lot of non-visual designers you'll be able to do with tools like Framer or build it straight into Sketch. But then she has the Annie's. Now, I don't even need to touch play. I don't even need to see it. What has she done? She's actually saying, I want you to see this feature. And I'm just going to animate it, animate the UI for you. And I want you to see how this feature works. She's taken out the guesswork. 
I don't even need to watch the three minute long video where she's probably explaining all this to me um, because she's broken it down into a digestible sound bite that we can jump into. And she keeps doing it. So now it's like she didn't just one and done. Like she's upping, I'm, I'm feeling the dedication to her craft right now. I'm extremely intrigued. And so is everybody in the group that's looking at her right now. I mean, it literally, <laughs> it just keeps going and that's fine. And then I'm going to another one just to see, does it hold up? She's taking on food repurposing platform. Anybody who's worked in like what the, what the food industry looks like and how, where it comes from and how we get it and uh, the change maker series that Tabby was talking about addressed that last year. We hosted that at Artifact. That picture that she saw at the beginning was at Artifact. Um, it is a gnarly ass giant brick wall of a problem. And so just the fact that um, she was even taking a stab at this, I was like, ooh, you don't know what you don't know, but good for you for even jumping into it. And we had a great conversation around that and everything. So anyway, so she, now like she's sealed the deal in regards to craft and, and what she's looking for. Um, the last is a senior, um, a senior director um, at Artifact. And so this isn't meant to intimidate either, but I wanted to, those first three portfolios are people that are either advancing their education or um, kind of starting out. Um, and just to reiterate, you know, those are two, three portfolios out of at, at least 2,000, you know, in the last year, out of the 4,000 applicants. Um, and so, um, you know, I see everything in between. Um, I don't want people to be, um, I, I wanted this to be, I mean, the name of the class is your portfolio should be this good. So, um, you know, I'm picking what I'm doing. I'm going right through real quick and I'm like, I'm like, clearly I, I know right off the bat she's senior because she's got a lot of brands that she's been working with. So she's fortunate to have that. Um, I'll jump right into her first project she did at Artifact. Um, She's less is more. I mean, even the size of the type and the shortness of the sentence. You know, picking stock photography um, that are showing current and emerging trends as far as how you're um, putting your screen images on things. Giving it space to breathe. In some ways, the younger designers are beating her at her own game in regards to, you know, functional prototyping, um, UI animations. These are all the things that when she sees it in your portfolio, she's like, oh, God, yes. Like, I don't, I'm too busy. <laughs> like, I'll take that, please. <laughs> but you can imagine if she even prototyped it and showed the movement in this data viz, you know. We're huge fans of data viz, too. I'll go to another one just to see like what is that next one look like. She's experimenting with ways of how she's telling the narrative. Brands will do a lot of big things. I think when you're in school, when you're learning, um, if you know that you don't want to be a brand designer, you don't want to create the um, identity systems for your clients or anything like that, then I would encourage you to take your idea and couple it with a well-known brand, maybe even an employer that you want to work with, or maybe not, because maybe you assume too much, maybe they're competition, um, and pair it together. Um, so um, your ideas or your explorations, do them for Amazon, and do them for Microsoft, and um, do them for Nordstrom and um, Starbucks and Eddie Bauer and Filson and everybody else that's in the city and show them what your ideas are. You're not having to redesign the entire project. What's that one feature when you were checking out that irked you? Um, how would you redesign that screen? What is, you're the persona. What's the quick wireframes look like? What's the, 
what's the final high fidelity prototype look like. It doesn't have to be real. But it takes a lot of guesswork out when you're trying to decide what color should I use and, and what should the name of the company be and you know, like make it REI um, and then sell it to REI and get a job at REI if you want to work for REI. So that's a sprinkling of the portfolios. Pinterest will lead you to every design blog in the world. A simple WordPress portfolio theme search will lead you to eye candy as far as the page will scroll. I clicked on one of these at one point and it brought me to a blog that had 40 of the best um, in March of 2017, you know? Now I can just go through and I can say like, oh, what is this? What's going on? I went through all of these and I'm by no means advocating for any company. I have not used this product. But it led me to Divi here, which I thought was interesting. Because for those of you that are a bit non-technical or don't really have the propensity or, or the want or desire to be a front-end developer, it's allowing you to edit and build in real time, um, responsive design. And um, I think the, and it's got a million widgets for you to plug in and to use into it that you can do in real time. 20 different layouts, it's like $200 a year. I know every dollar counts, but that's including hosting. Squarespace is $100. And there is nothing wrong with your Squarespace portfolio. But I'll tell you that Amelia and Armina and Vice and Vision with Nicole, they're the one percenters. Like if you leave Squarespace and do another WordPress theme, any other WordPress theme, you will put yourself in a 1% category. Um, It'll be just different enough that that right there is going to make people stop and be like, oh, this isn't a Squarespace site. What is this? What's going on here? UI stencils are exactly what they sound like. Sketch pads, where it's already drawn out for you. Stencils to create objects so that your circles and squares are a little bit better. If, again, you're super badass graphic designer, you can sacrifice some of these things. But if you're not, every asset you put in your portfolio has to go as high a level of dedication of craft as possible. And these are just one of those easy ways of instead of doing it in your notebook, um, have your UI stencils and it'll keep it in form and it'll keep it nice and easy for you. The noun project. Icons for everything, literally. Freaking everything. Uh, community. And it just scrolls forever. So for those of you that <clears throat> are, again, not high, you know, not visual designers, um, this allows for an easy resource for you to um, tell your story. Um, each one of these will say who it's done. Um, you can download them for free. Um, just give credit where credit's due. So iconography by at so-and-so and at so-and-so um, in your portfolio. Framer is one of the tools that allows you to give animation to your UI. Let's see if it loads. <clears throat> For those of you that are using the Creative Suite and Illustrator and Photoshop, um, you know, learning these programs, there's always a ramp up, but um, the future is going this direction. Working in Framer, working in Envision, um, or, or working in After Effects, these are things that are going to just help your cause. And you know what? There's a lot of old school designers, and a lot of us, I think, included, um, that are scared to touch this. And so just the fact that you weren't scared and you did it, um, they'll want you on that team because they don't want to do it. 
When you're packaging things up for a client, because you will, whether you're at a consultancy and we're handing it off to a client, or you're working in-house and you're presenting it to stakeholders, um, you know, if you don't, if you don't, I mean, if your presentation is shoddy, it could kill the great idea altogether. And so it goes to this sketch. This is kind of, I remember, I remember in fourth grade, somebody being like, my grandpa got me stock and blockbuster. Like, I'm going to be rich someday. It'll never go away, you know? And then, like, I remember a couple years ago thinking to myself, like, who, who's going to beat Adobe Creative Suite? Like, how do you beat the, They've got the market cornered. And I see designers applying to jobs now. There's a designer who applied to a job where the only thing she really knows, her main tool, is Sketch. That's it. And she has a whole portfolio around it in product design that we just couldn't ignore. It makes the steps of designing and keeping libraries of, of um, libraries, uh, thank you, <laughs> thank you, um, together and you can rapidly prototype things and put it together, especially if you're working on large scale things. So these are little um, tools of the trade that um, everybody in my office is learning right now. Um, if there's downtime, it's like, all right, jump into Framer and do this. Jump into After Effects and do this.